You're listening to the Comic Crusaders Podcast. I am your host, Al Mega, CEO of Comic Crusaders and Undercover Capes. In this show, I'm sitting down with creators from all walks of life to talk about inspiration, process, the lessons they've learned, and a whole lot more. Wepa, what up, me hint This is your boy, Al Mega. Welcome to a brand new Comic Crusaders Podcast. Today, folks. We don't have a comic book creator. We have an entrepreneur, DJ, producer, writer, lecturer. This man has done it all. And he is kicking ass now on Twitch with a rewind of some dope classic music from an instrumental, dynamic, ill club that was like a force to be reckoned with back in the day in NYC. Let me introduce the one, the only, the multi-talented, Ref Gomez, Huepa, kiddo, how you doing? What's up, Al M E G to the A? Hey, hey, what's popping, kiddo? How you doing, Rafe? I would have said Ra- Rafi Gomez because I'm Puerto Rican, but I got you, Rafe Gomez. <laughs> yeah, whatever you want, man. Just you know, not. The I'll call you Shirley. <laughs> awesome, kiddo, man. Thanks for for uh, coming on and agreeing to be on the show today. To talk about you know danceateria, rewind, yeah. and more. All right, but we're gonna Absolutely. get into danceateria in a little bit because folks, this is wow. I've heard some of the mixes. I'm like, yo, classic, taking me back. Like this is the type of stuff, kitties. This is the stuff that you know makes you sound like an old person, especially when you're in your forties. You're gonna sit back with your kid as you listen to danceateria, rewind like this. I remember when I was at the club. When this, <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. That's it. That's, yo, he's popping off dope stuff. So, Rafi, thank you again. We got to get into it, homie. Yeah. Well, Orgy he, story. Every, he, he, every, uh-huh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, Dance Ateria, everybody's got their favorite club, right? Everybody's got yeah. their favorite club stories. What was unique about this club in New York, early 80s, this was a launching pad for style. This was mm-hmm. where the Beastie Boys worked as janitors. LL Cool J. Wait, 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 wait a minute. They yeah, were yeah, janitors yeah. there? The Beastie Boys were janitors at this club. LL oh, Cool J was the doorman. Sade was the bartender. Oh, what? Keith Haring, the famous artist, he waited tables. Jean Michel Basquiat, the guy who's got this big art exhibit in New York and it just closed because of like a whole controversy in Orlando. He made murals for this place. In fact, he made a mural and they you can't do up shit up. in Orlando. <laughs> right, right. This guy, just to show you where he was, he was at the beginning, they paid him 50 bucks to make a mural. He didn't finish it. He ran off with their 50 bucks. And Madonna was the elevator operator. No. Yeah. What she floor, was, please? So, exactly. <laughs> that, that, she was one of those manual elevators that, you know, you, you kind of get in between oh, the she, Did she have the little hat back in the day, too, and everything? That, she was the elevator girl. So this was the place, <laughs> they called it the supermarket of alternative style. This is where you came to hear what was going on. There was no influencers back then, but these people were the influencers. Art, oh, yeah. music, it was style, fashion. In a different way. It, exactly. Yep. So you went there to take all this in. And you went there to be inspired. There were five floors in this place. Oh my God, five! Multiple DJs, all spinning. Some guys spin were spinning punk. Some guys were spinning salsa. Some some guys were spinning uh, hip hop, which was just getting started. So what I do with Dance Interior Rewind is I take all of those, all those DJs, all those sounds, and I compress it into Ooh. a two-hour mix. It's it like, becomes like my, my fongo, sancocho of music. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it, no, it's exactly it. It's it's mofongo. It is it is. If you were there, this is a sample of what you'd experience. And what I start the show, you hear bartenders setting up a bar. You hear glasses clinking. So I'm trying to take your mind into this place, like I am with you in this atmosphere. And then I just kick the mix for two hours. I don't say anything. I just go from track to oh, track. Word. You don't say blended. anything? No. Because oh. it's not about so me. You know, like DJ Clue or what was homie back, Kid Capri back in the day? No, nope, no, nope, <laughs> no. Nope. No, I started off, I, I just tell you like what I'm going to be playing. And then I start mixing because nobody gives a shit about me. They want to hear about what I'm going to bring. And that's all I'm doing is I'm going to take you back. I'm going to mix songs into each other. You would never think would have any relation whatsoever to each other. But it works. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna. I got a sample for you folks. Don't you worry. But before we get yep. into that, we need to get into the origin story of Rafe. Right. Yeah. OG, where you from originally? Grown up, and how did you start getting into anything pop culture? What was the first love? 
Yep, North Jersey. Uh, I was into comic books big time. My favorite. You see, I feel embarrassed about this, but I I didn't follow Marvel because I didn't like the idea you had to go like multiple issues to get a story. I wanted <laughs> I wanted my story to be from beginning to end in one issue. One so I I liked Justice League. I liked The Flash. I liked Green Lantern. They they were my favorites. It's all right. Nothing wrong with DC. I, I'm a DC. I, I enjoy my DC, DC DC stuff. And you know, if you love the Green Lantern, I hope you got to read uh uh, uh oh, is it the Black Lanterns? Uh, Jordan, yeah, uh, uh, Black Blackest Night. Oh, yep, yep, oh, yep. Amazing. <laughs> with him and Green Arrow, and they're confronted by that dude nope. in the street. Yep. Well, oh, the Green Arrow one that was dope. I actually had that issue in my hands uh not too long ago. I let it go. Oh, I wish I didn't. I also had the first <laughs> appearance of John Stewart within that batch. I bought it off some guy in Brooklyn, like old Neil Adams, um, oh, Neil uh, Adams. Denny O'Neill. <laughs> yeah, Neil Adams passed away too, man. Shit. Oh. I mean, he sold me like a bunch of their run for like $25. He was, you know, oh. a druggie. Yeah. And, and my family follows me when I'm trying to make the deal. Mm -hmm. And my brother knows what it is worth. He's like, oh, oh, I'm like, I just turned around for a minute. I'm like, you need to get the f out of here because you have no poker face. <laughs> get out of here now. It's a tell. It's gonna jack up the price. Though. Yeah, bro. I mean, shit, bro. He itching for his stuff. He might, he might want to get more stuff if you see your wow. excitement. But stop it. <laughs> All right, that's cool. Yeah. So, how did you get into the music? What was the first taste of music for you? Uh, I just loved uh, the funk. I loved Parliament Funkadelic. Ooh. Um, you said funk. Oh, I, yeah. was your family yeah. put, playing this stuff in the house, or did you discover uh, no. it? No, I, I was just discovering. By the way, funk is in music, not funk is in no bathing. I, you know, I always... <laughs> yes, the, the, the old school uh term, folks. Not, oh, not always the term. about the antiperspirant, so don't worry about me. I wasn't bringing the funk, I was digging the funk. Uh, but, I would hope man. not, man, because then yeah. clothes wouldn't be full. <laughs> no, you, you'd smell me from here if I wasn't down with that. But, it, uh, it'd be smelly Gomez, not right? <laughs> yeah, that, that stank, stank ass Gomez. Oh, oh my god, what? <laughs> Like DJ Stank. Why? DJ yeah, Stank. Stanky in our gang. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then from there, I just was fascinated by the idea of of a, a DJ, not the guy on the radio like, hey, I didn't get yeah. about that. I think the, the, the people who were taking you on a sonic trip and using their skills to go from track to track and move you along to inspire you to take a physical action. See, I found that was amazing. I, I wanted to learn you, more about that. I want to ask you, that. do you think DJ is the proper term? Because I think that a DJ is actually more of an MC, a master of ceremony that keeps carrying the party along, yeah. moving it along. Yeah, do you think that DJ is the appropriate term? Well, it's what everybody uses, but yeah, I agree. It is a right? term that's kind of antiquated. I, I think... Um, uh, audio content presenter or something along those lines because <laughs> but that's too that's too much of a mouthful. He starts, yeah, starts, it is. Starts, ACP guy. I'm yeah, ACP you, Gomez. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you start drooling and spitting, and people get pissed off, and they don't even want to be near. Yeah, no but, Daffy Duck moments, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, and and so I wanted to learn about how to do this. I kind of taught myself, and I was working with vinyl back then. Oh uh, my god. Yeah. yeah, vinyl is wax, folks. <laughs> the yeah. new thing that yeah. the yeah. old thing that's new again. <laughs> right. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's on board with it because what, what was so cool about vinyl, you know, there was a lot of money and effort made spent to create the artwork, to create the liner notes. And then when it became a CD, that kind of got squashed down. And now that it's digital, nobody even cares. So with the CD, you still had at least the booklet art and the CD art something. on it. Yep. There was something. But when you go to digital, strictly, you got nothing but a digital no. file that could get deleted or lost. <laughs> like, right. And, and the things that mean not, the, the, the logo of the band or the artist. Yes. You don't and see. That, that meant something. Like people would wear them on their shirts. And now you see young people wearing shirts, but it's a bands from 40 years ago because they don't they don't resonate mm -hmm. with that idea of you're buying a brand of a musician and it's connecting with you and you want to wear what their representation is a logo or the album cover so yeah it's i'm, I'm happy that that there's some nostalgia to that or discovery but it, it was something that i i really enjoyed uh being a part of well hopefully with that material we want we could be able to find that awesome type of swag hey that's it one day <laughs> one day the store will open Van day, there That's we go. It. All right, yeah. so what what did your parents listen to in the crib that kind of made you kind of seek music outside? Some whack ass shit, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all, all, all that old school like emotional Latino music. Yo, yeah. they're like, oh my god, shut up. You know what it was, man? Al, it, it was uh, 
it was like audio anesthesia. I don't know if you remember <laughs> hearing this shit. It's like WRFM and WPAT. So like, they called it beautiful music, WRFM. And they would play instrumental versions of popular songs done by orchestras. And as a kid, you want to take a hammer, a ball peen hammer, just smash it right into your head wow, as you're listening. <laughs> ¿Qué le pasó a radio? What happened to the radio, kiddo? Like, oh, uh, I don't know. I blew, the speaker blew. Yeah, yeah, and, and my brain did. So I was just, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't be down with this. You sort of thought of my, it was either the speaker or my brain. Huh? Right, then, then you have to clean that up, and then it gets into the, the food you're making. So, you know, we don't want all that. And, uh, yeah, and, and I, I never was really into the experience or the sound of disco, per se. I found a lot of it. To just from a production point of view is a little too sweet for me yeah. something sometimes something would cut through and then certainly like something like the Bee Gees, the songwriting was just I mean, that's some the, the greatest Gees, song man. the so greatest songwriters who ever lived so that that was my journey of trying to find what i wanted to combine and merge that wasn't necessarily what was the thing that you would hear in a, a club or a venue and so i uh i eventually got into acid jazz and and uh um, How did you discover that, though? Again, also self discovery. Just walking into yeah. the Tower Records. Let's say if you remember you know, Tower of in the Village back then. <laughs> do you remember the Village Voice and newspapers like that? Hell yes. Son. Okay, they would have thirty pages of advertisements for clubs and events. Yeah. Yeah. And not just and, the porn and, section, folks. There was actual club stuff too. Whoa, <laughs> hey, I, I I didn't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you, 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 I would read it and I said, who's that? Who's this? What club is that? And it just, it, it inspired curiosity. And I wanted to see what this was all about. All right. So wait a minute. So what age are you now that here you are, you're picking a village voice. You're looking up like, oh shit, there's these clubs out here. Were you able to get, I mean, but back then, well, you know, it doesn't really matter who you were able to get into because you could get into. <laughs> Snuck in. Yeah, it didn't matter. Eric. It didn't matter. Snuck in. I had a fake idea I got from Times Square, man. And I took Oh a shit. Yeah, Not one of those bullshit ones. Yeah. I remember yeah. Them dudes. <laughs> yeah. And then they sold it blank and you could just fill in all whatever you wanted and you just flash that. Maybe you got to give the guy at the front, you know, a little cash and you're in. Holy shit. Yo, yeah. I remember though, it's true, folks. Back in the day, Times Square, you know, Giuliani fucked up Times Square. <laughs> I'll say it that. was anything <laughs> goes, man. Anything goes there. Whatever you wanted to buy, they, it was available. Yeah, let me tell you, kid. As, as a 14 year old kid, I was buying Ninja Stars and, and Size from, oh, the, yeah. from the Ninja Store right on 40 Deuce. Yep, yep. And it was, Next and there were movie. books like how, how to Build a Bomb and all this crazy <laughs> books. And, and that you, you, you'd have the, you see, All but did that make us crazy? Did that make us crazy? Yeah. No. And then kids nowadays don't even have all of that, and they're going nuts, you know, bucking shots out there, like like yeah. like more than we did. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. This would be like Department of Homeland Security not behind oh, the door. Shit, with this, yo, for real. With this kind of stuff. But <laughs> you uh, ain't lying. Yeah, you ain't lying, bro. But I'm pretty sure Homeland would have been knocking around these clubs too. Cause it was some wild times, bro. No, it, it was, it was, was lawless. What was your first taste of New York City nightlife? I I would there was a place I can't remember that was I went to a place well, you may remember that it called the Ritz. It was a big I remember Ritz, yes. Now now it's called Webster yes. Hall, I think it still exists. Yeah, Webster, Webster Hall. Hall, when they dropped that first uh EDM, yeah, as you guys call it now, but it was a house album. Oh shit. Right. I yep. now that, that Webster Hall now that's that was something that I would go to a lot, you know. Right. Again, like you said, multiple rooms, multiple music. I mean, I remember uh, one of the last times I went, um, security was very happy I was gone because I I, I got so messed up. I was like throw, puking all over the place. Because you had a cold, not because you drank anything. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I don't know. Of course. You had the flu. <laughs> so so COVID that was. COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah pre-COVID. Pre you were a hipster. Pre-COVID hipster. Yeah, so I, I saw some shows there and I thought that was amazing. But then my first real club experience, Paradise Garage. That was, was where was that? That was in '81, Paradise wow. Garage. Yeah, okay. and I and that was a whole different experience because the, <laughs> the sound me. system and the idea of the DJ as this journey leader, and that was the first time I heard the track "Numbers" by Kraftwerk. Which, oh my God! Where? Yeah, and that inspired EDM. Techno, electronica, Latin freestyle, Miami bass. That was like the Elvis of all of those genres. 
And eventually I just started going to more places. And what really captured my heart was Danceteria because it had multiple floors. There was so much stylishness there. There was, you, you felt like you were seeing and experiencing something that was like a year later going to be the thing. I say, and, I love this. You, you're speaking of it. It wasn't just a night out. It was a goddamn experience. It was. It was. And and the, like you, Studio 54 was about how much money you had and the guest list and the velvet robe. And how many drugs you could put up your nose. <laughs> That's right. Or or, or or sell to whatever they were, you know, the customers were. But I always found Danceteria to be like, you know what? If you're interesting, if you've got passion for this, we're going to let you in. Because some of the most passionate people about this experience weren't from Manhattan. They were from Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens, Jersey, because there was nothing like that out where wow. they lived. So they came to a place like Desiteria and went, oh my God, finally, this is what I've been looking for. Give it to me. Just give it, give me everything that you got. I don't know this music. I don't give a shit. I want to hear, take me somewhere, take me to a place that, that that's amazing. And I will find out this, what these records are. I'll go to the stores. I'll go to rock and soul. I'll go to downstairs records. I'll go to vinyl mania and I will figure ah, out what these, what these tracks God. are. Right. And, and guys, and, you have no idea the names he's dropping, uh, unless you were a New York native in, in, around that time, because what he's dropping right now is like, yeah, good old shopping times. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was where you went the day after the, you were in the club and say, okay, I heard this thing that was like, and, and then the guy behind oh. the turntables at the front. Yeah. Oh, I know that. Here, here it is. Bobby, pull that off for this guy. And what happened to that experience in a music shop, bro? Yes. I yes. mean, I grew up in Brooklyn. I had San Germán and I had two of them. So one was American music and one was, you know, Latin music. And then we had obviously Tower Records and all that. I mean, you know, so one of my boys. What was your favorite had, store in Brooklyn? What was your favorite record store? It was the Sahin Mom because I would get all my Tony Touch, you know, DJ yeah. Crew, Capri, you know, and all those DJs from back then. They were doing mixtapes. Yeah. That's where I was getting. I had the illest collection hmm. of mixtapes. Do you that still have is, them? Um, I have a few laying around somewhere. Wow. You know, but I was a big, again, I'm in that generation. So, you know, when, when it came to new music, I was buying it on tape everywhere, every fucking store you could find. I don't give a fuck. If I could walk in and come out with sign, I was happy. So, you know, while I was also a comic book collector, I was also a big into music. Yep. You yep. know, so I still have, you know, a lot of tapes of the first Nas, Mob Deep, Wu Tang, oh. got even the singles. I, I would buy the, I would even buy the singles. That's how much I was into the music. Man, you are passionate, committed if you're buying the singles. <laughs> I had, cause I have every single Wu Tang single. And I was showing it off the other day. I still got protect your neck in its sleeve. That's worth something. That's worth something. Definitely. Yeah, man. The type of stuff I was into, man. So talk about you now, because I understand, you know, you, you fell so much in love with the genre. You actually took the music to another level, and you actually even got onto radio at one point. So talk about you developing and creating yourself to yeah. be this DJ to step into the radio scene now. Well, when I was uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, um, cause I left the, the DJ stuff on the side cause I, it was always just fun for me. It was never a profession to, to pursue. Um, I was listening to, and you may remember this smooth jazz CD one one point. Oh my God. <laughs> I, listen, I miss all these damn New York stations and stuff yep. bringing up. Oh my God. And I listened to it and I was listening and I was like, th th this is talk about anesthesia. This, this shit is putting me to sleep is there's got to be a, a different presentation of what this experience is that would be a, have a little more flavor to it so i knew from personal experience that if you're talking jazz there's funky jazz progressive stuff that's got a beat and rhythm and is and is, and is groove driven i don't know maybe see maybe i'll put together a demo tape of me djing this kind of stuff and maybe it could be a late night mix show on cd okay. 101.9 so i put it together and I didn't expect to hear anything. And uh, the dude got back to me and he said, I love what you're doing. It's brilliant. It's fantastic. It'll never work. <sighs> why, why will it never work? He said, because the people who listen to the station, they want their brains to be just numb. They don't want, this is too. They want anesthesia. <laughs> they want, that's what they came there. They wanted a big, <laughs> big bowl of anesthesia. To just, that's what they wanted. And, and uh, I said, oh, okay, well, do you know for a fact that at like a, on a 10 to midnight on a Saturday, they wouldn't want something more energetic? I yeah, said, that nah, they well, may want this. Right. And he said, well, we don't know, but we, we, it just would never work. I went, all right. So I then knocked on the door of Sirius. This was before it was Sirius XM. 
And I said, look, here's what I got. What do you think? And they got back to me like within a day and said, yeah, you want to be on six hours on the weekend? What? Yeah. And I said, uh, did you yeah. even expect that type of response? I expected nothing. I expected more of the oh, thing. You expect but, the crickets and bullshit yeah. like this guy. Okay. Yeah, right. Who are they? But they were looking to expand their audience. They were looking to keep Whoa. them tuned in longer. You emailed at the right time, didn't you? Something, sometimes, you man, Al, you know, it's about persistence and being able to shake off the nose. Yes. Because the way I look Agreed. at it is when somebody says no, that's one less no gets you closer to the yes. And that so, comes also from your consultant side too on, on, on your day job stuff. Because I know you you do some sort of day job. Yeah, you don't, you know, a, a no is not a no. Right. Maybe. Not always. It, maybe it's a no, not now. Or maybe it's no because I'm a stupid ass. You know, you don't, you yeah. never really are quite sure. Okay, I like how you mentioned in the back room. It was like, well, when people say no and then come back to you later on, you got to charge that. What, what he uh, proclaimed as the asshole tax. The asshole tax, man. <laughs> it's like they don't know, but it's an extra 10%. <laughs> you know, hey, you messed up, man. I gave you a great deal. Right. And now you're going to be paying more. And just you, you, <laughs> you're going to get the great best service, you know, but it's right. just a little like smear for you, you being. It. You did it to yourself. You got nobody to self. It's like uh, Flavor Flav. I got can't do nothing for you, G. I can't do nothing for you. Ah, well, but tell me, you saw Public Enemy dancing to you? Jesus Christ, have they been there? Well, they there's, there's many they, people been there. They were coming in at the end of Dancing to because they okay. lost their lease in '86, and it PE started wow. kind of booming in '87. So they they missed oh, out on that. '86. What a good year, man. Though. Yep. So much. Crazy shit happened that year. Yeah, yeah. It was uh Pee Wee's Dance, all everything. that stuff. Yep. Yeah. It was a good year. I mean, that's for me. I found out I found a lot of music that year. It was crazy. But yeah. okay, so so doing CD this, one, right. Yeah, I, just, I got on serious. Mm -hmm. I was on serious. I mean serious, yep. so, yes, doing six hours a night, and then I get a call like four months later. Speaking of asshole tax, I get a call from CD 101. <laughs> they say, uh, we gotta talk. We gotta talk. Oh. Because so they let go of the asshole from before. They, they well, they didn't want this asshole on their station doing the, the funky jazz mixes. But then they heard about what I was doing on Sirius, and ah. and then they said, "Okay, we got a problem. The problem is our listeners are really old, and you sound like you could be bringing in some younger listeners. So yes. we need what you're doing, and we're going to hook you up. We're going to get you syndicated." On radio stations what? across across America. What? Race so is about to kill it, baby. So I left Sirius and I was on at the peak like 40 stations across the country. Wow. I was I had a show on QVC where I was selling these jazz CDs. I saw I, I read about that. I'm like, what? Rafe was on there selling stuff too. Kid? Three in the morning, kid. Three in the morning. <laughs> and you wouldn't believe people is are this watching. Three in the morning, New York time. Three in the morning, New York time. So that's the and, Peggy Bundys of the world. Just eating right. their bonbons shopping. That, that, that's it. And you would be stunned. People are watching. People are buying. People are digging this. Listen, and stoners are, are, are awake all hours of the night. <laughs> it's true. I mean, they, they were up and they wanted to enhance their lives with this music. So that was cool. Um, and, was that the uh, first time you ever did that too on TV? Selling first time. Products? First wow. time. How did you feel when you got that? I, here, here's something that drives me. Um, and that prevents me being nervous. You need what I got. I am a mm. solution for you. I yeah. can help you. And it's not about me. It's about what I'm presenting and sharing. Like with what you're doing, Al, you are solving an issue. People are looking for a something to, to escape their their day to day. They want to be informed by your expertise. You are presenting them with a, a, an alternative, an option that brings pleasure to them. Yes. And that's what you're selling. And in that case, on QVC, I, they didn't care about who I was. But what I was selling was my guidance of what kind of music would benefit their lives. Mm. And, and mm. when I looked at it from that point of view, I had zero nervousness. Because I was so enthusiastic and so driven to help them that that got me over everything. See, and, now, I want to share something here, because there was something you said that was instrumental in, in helping you. Yes, you're and, helping. And, 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 and this is one of the bad boys, too, you said. This book, okay. I'm, <laughs> glad, you, I'm glad you brought it in at this point. Yeah, because we're, we're talking about this. So I was like, okay, yep. so you're talking this about book, this growth, man. It's by the guy named, a guy named Tim Lawrence. He's from the UK. This gave me such knowledge and insight 
about the scene in New York at that time. So you're politi- talking about a guy from the UK is giving yep. you insight to New York. He taught me. He Whoa. taught me about the political, social, business, cultural aspects of what mm. made that possible back then from 1980 to 1983. This amazing energy of the creative downtown underground movement that made Danceteria possible. And here's a statistic that's going to fry your dome. Back then, there were t- around 12,000 venues across the city where there was music and dancing because the think about it, the clubs opened up in neighborhoods that no one wanted to live in, no offices wanted to open. They were building buildings that used to be factories or they used to be yeah, it was whatever. it was the ghetto. Right, exactly. Nobody and so when these club owners came and opened up, the landlords were like, "Okay, fine." But yeah, now it's your funeral and all right, of a sudden. Exactly. <laughs> but, but now all those places like the Danceteria, it's now $5 million condos. All Crazy. those places that were in the clubs that were the non-desirable neighborhoods, now it's retail, now it's multi-million dollar residencies. Ugh. So we went from 12,000 places in the early 80s to 1,200 in the what? city. What? Across the city, 1,200 venues. It just shows you where it has gone to. Whoa. Because back then, you could you could be living in the city back in the early 80s. You could be a, a musician, a fashion designer, an artist, and you, you'd spend less than $100 a month on rent if you live with people. So you had all these creative people who would go to a place like Danceteria. They'd exchange ideas. They'd There's no email. There was no chatting. They would chat face-to-face. And they'd yeah, exchange. Yeah. Oh, my God. Real life, folks. Right. Real life I conversations. Yep. And so they'd inspire each other. And like you had a artists like. handshake was the virtual DM like your deal made. Yep, buying each other drinks, and you had hip hoppers talking with the graffiti guys, talking with guys like Jean Michel Basquiat, and, and they're all just giving each other inspiration and an, and an exciting way to look at their art. That does not exist anymore. You can't afford it. It's impossible to have that anymore. Right. So it, it, that's what made right. that scene possible. Crazy. And I that and that it. book, th- that book, it talked about. You want to talk about? There were DJ playlists in this book from Jelly Bean from. Uh, well, hey, listen, from the fun house, yo, all of that shit out. is in there. Check this out, Rafe. Uh, I don't know if you were around when Long Island City had the water taxi beach in Long Island City. And one day, Jelly Bean Benitez is mixing. And, oh. and I go with my daughter because my wife uh, had broken her ankle. She couldn't go. So she's like, you know what, guys? Go out today. You know, go. it's free when I go there. I said, I looked it up. I said, oh, wow, Jelly Bean Benitez is going to be there. I got to go. So I go. He was the DJ at the Fun House, which yeah, is this bro. crucial club on West 26th Street. Check this out. So my little girl, she's like six years old at the time. She's listening to this music that Jelly Bean is spinning, and she just starts dancing. So, it. you know, I just sit down, and, and I'm seeing, you know, crowds of adults from around. I'm like, oh, look, this little girl is just feeling this awesome music. Bro, Jelly Bean sends his assistant. Hey, Jelly Bean wants to meet you guys. I'm like, what? I said, baby, come over here. Get the fuck out of here. Ha! He was like, and he told me straight up. He looked at her and then looked at me and said, this little girl is going to be a monster when she's older. And yes, she is. She graduated college. Congratulations. She's a digital media man. artist right now. Uh, you know, so if you need any work, uh, Rafe, let me tell you. I'm going to be in touch. She's a musician. So okay. she's, she's also into music and a musician. So... Does she remember that what you're talking about? Does she remember that stuff? Oh, of course she does. Because again, she was uh, she for uh, daddy, who's that? I'm like, oh my god, you have no idea mm-hmm. who we just spoke. He's a fucking yep. legend. Yeah. And he asked us to go over there to him so he could meet you. Yep. Feel wow. special because that shit is crazy. Well, all that stuff is in this book. The tracks that he played, uh, Planet Rock, all of that stuff, Hashim, the soul. Oh, oh. oh. All that and this this author just does a brilliant job of breaking it down and explaining explaining why this was so special and unique and cannot be repeated again. So if you're you have any interest, uh, this book is it's like the Bible. Essential. Now so now we're really gonna get into dance material. Talk to me why you felt that you needed to do this, especially as the rewind. Yeah, we're gonna get into a mix in a couple of minutes, a short, very short mix and so one minute. Pictures. But why did you feel? that this was the spot that you needed to really focus that, on? Uh, during the pandemic, uh, everybody had a really hard time, right? And, there, oh, and it's, yeah. still, it's still going on. But at, in the depths of it, I realized that I do three things every day. Uh, I do my work, 
I clean my apartment and I try not to die. And, and that's it. <laughs> that's all I had. I had nothing else. But you, know, you they, sound like me almost, except I also have Mary, so I got to tend to the family. You got to put that that's in true. there. Yeah, yeah. So that way, yeah, there, there's family and there's eating and going to the bathroom and, and showering. Okay, maybe there's a couple of more. But uh, those are the I three hope he's talking. We don't want yeah. smelly Gomez. Right, that's he what I'm talking. Gomez, right? I, I don't. I don't, son. I don't bring the stank. I do not bring the stank. <laughs> Thank Gomez. I'm fresh, <laughs> fresh as I can be. Fresh Thank is so you. clean, more right. so than Outcast could ever tell you. Apparently. That's right. That's, that's, that's what I'm doing. And I was taking a long walk, and I was I I just put my arms up to the universe. I said, I got nothing here. I have no ideas of what I can do to bring me joy. Nothing. You're like, the old meal, bring me sun. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just said, and, and this is also helps you with business. I said, I don't have the answer. I'm giving it to the universe. I am open. Just give me inspiration. I have no, if it works, great. If it doesn't, I don't care. Just, I am tapped out. I but am an empty cup. Fill me up. I, I am an empty cup and, and I got nothing. And wow. what I realized was that what brought me tremendous joy was DJing. I couldn't do it in a club. I couldn't do it on the radio anymore, but maybe I could do it somewhere else. And that's mm. where I discovered Twitch. And then I said, well, how did you I discover do? Twitch? I just searched DJ platforms online and I found it. And amazing I, DJs on that motherfucking yeah, platform. Yeah, Let me tell really you, good. Though. Really good. And um, I thought, well, what can I do to differentiate what I'm doing? Because nobody gives a f shit about DJ Rape Gomez because who the fuck is that moron? But if I present something that has a history to it and present it in a way that nobody else in the world is doing, that would be really exciting. Oh, and the so, presentation is real, son. That's it. And so I, I, I realized, I came to the conclusion that Danceteria had a unique story to it, not just the music, the culture, the vibe, the style of all the people who came out of there. And I would take all of the information that I learned from this book, Life and Death from the, on the New York dance floor, and my own experience, and I would, in two hours, take you on a trip. I would take you somewhere. Cool. You know what? We're going to be talking about this trip. So let, let's do this really quick, right? Yep. Uh, where are we at? I'm sharing the screen. Add to the stream, guy. There you go. And it has audio. I'm sure. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, th this is a sample of the kind of stuff you'll hear. And by the way, just I want to say, this is not the greatest hits of the 80s. This is not Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson. This is stuff that was unique to the downtown New York experience. And these are tracks that represent that. So uh, uh, let's check it out. It's only a minute long. So check this out. Yep. Dance interior rewind with Rafe Gomez. You can hear it, right, Rafi? <laughs> Big hit, big hit. Woo. Well, the don't stop, don't stop, get enough. But we just can't miss. With the beat like this. It's the joy. Oh, my God. Throwing it back, baby. Let's mm. start roller skating and having That's some good it. time, folks. <laughs> hey, bye. Hey. You play the shit I love, bro. Doing it. I had this record. <laughs> Do any creeps? Yeah. Did you notice Al the huge Latino influence on so much of that music? Absolutely, because we got rhythm, baby. That's it. And and those were all Caucasian bands growing up and living in New York. And they took everything, the stew around them, and brought it out into these releases by they Liquid took, Liquid and yeah, they, they took Sancocho and used it for their own platforms. I yep, know. yep. And it was live musicians, and they would perform at Danceteria. And that was a, a time, a, a period in time where they were rock bands making music to play on the dance floor. Wow. Crazy, crazy. So, so that's just a sampling of the experience of what I'm kicking up. Every Thursday night, 8 p.m., EST on Twitch. Yeah. AP and EST go. on Twitch. And this, this is it right there, folks. All right. Right there. So you go to your twitch.tv account right now and check out Danceteria Rewind, baby. Yep. Every That's Thursday, 8 p.m. 
And there's hey, look at this. Oh my God! Look how He's young the little boy. He, he was the doorman. He was he was working the door at Danceteria. That shit is crazy, bro. Yep. What yep. the hell? You're it, killing it, show, me. it shows you what this place attracted these people who would go on to define popular culture. And oh, Jean, yep. Jean-Michel Basquiat just had an art show canceled in Orlando, but he's got a big one in New York called uh, King Pleasure with Keith Haring, who is also an incredible artist from uh, from Kutztown, PA, but so inspired by graffiti and hip hop. <laughs> and these are these two guys hanging out at Dance Interior. My brother, I just noticed his T-shirt too. I was like, Holy yeah. crap. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me in trouble now. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. And then, yo, the queen oh my was God. in this mother. Yeah. Were you there for this one, bro? I mean, look, uh, I, look, I folks, a, look who that is. I got a story about her. Um, well, tell me. She, tell well, well, first of all, she was baby. dating. Her first track was produced by a DJ at Dance Tyrion named Mark Caymans. Everybody, that was his track. He also produced the first track by the Beastie Boys called Beastie Groove. This guy, Mark Caymans, all happened at Dance Tyrion. But anyway, wow. check this out. So Madonna's first track, Everybody, came out in 82. Nobody knew Whoa. really who she was. She, who, is, who is this white girl? Right. Who, with hairy who, underarms. Right. Well, you know. <laughs> but but not funky. But not funky underarms. I'm sure she... Thank you know, God. I hope not. So the, I was there, and somebody... There was a private party on the roof of Danceteria. And the roof, there was no protection no they anything. had roof parties back then too they had roof parties with no protection no 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 protection you could like throw yourself or somebody else off the roof and like you better not it. mess around and be a dick because you will right. get thrown off the roof yeah right, right. that's <laughs> Literally. where they roll so i somehow managed to sneak up to this private roof party and wait uh, hey wait 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 you can't get in trouble now as many years ago how the no, hell did you sneak up there bro i, I think i just <laughs> kind of kind of like backed in and like, 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 I, I, oh, I, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to be here. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that, that's what my wife has taught me. Always say that. I didn't know I, was suppo I wasn't supposed right. to be here. Let, let him catch me and let him just boot me out. <laughs> so I, I get up there and then uh, somebody said, okay, we're going to have a little performance by Madonna. And the people who knew her were, oh, awesome. And I was, okay, who, who's that? It's the hell of a uh, Madonna. <laughs> came, yeah, right. And we're going to go to church. So... Uh, she came up and she had three dancers and she had on that she had this massive JVC boombox, like big ass. JVC. Oh yeah. my god. Right, right. Yeah, you're taking me back. These white hairs we got, folks. This shit is serious business. That's all <laughs> that's all, all culture right in there. Right. <laughs> so she, she puts the boom box down and it's an instrumental track on there. She presses it, presses the cassette, and it's the <laughs> instrumental track of everybody. And she starts singing. She's got three dancers with her, and they've got flashlights. I'm not talking about these little ass flashlights, like these big camping flashlights with these oh, massive shit. lanterns. And, <laughs> right, right. With big, big lens. And they're dancing around her, but focusing the flashlights on her as ah. she's singing. And I'm looking at this, and everybody else is looking at this, and I'm thinking, what the? But in a way of, I cannot believe what I'm seeing. This looks this so cool. Creative <laughs> person who is just doing it with a boombox and flashlights and everybody was captivated and she sang the song and then she said, thank you. And just left. And, I, and everybody was, what did we just see? Who you, who? you saw the queen of the yeah. future right there. That's what and you and, saw. and in, in three years she would run the world. So yeah, and you were there for that. I was there. Wow. And, uh, um, yeah, and that's why I love that place so much because there was always something going on with people who were going to be eventually influencing everything. So I said, I have to, I have to create a tribute to this. Gotcha. And, you know, I'm not going to play the audio on this, but I do want to show a little bit. Yep. I can't just play the audio because I don't want YouTube to spank me because this is what they do. <laughs> but folks, check it out. This is one like this is when she. Let's talk about what what Rafe is talking about. We're gonna show it right now if my mouse want to cooperate. There we go. Hey, mouse, so nice to me. Check that out. So, did this have a stage like this and everything? They had a floor had a for floor. live performances. Oh my who god, a dedicated show. floor for live. 
people, Duran Duran, play their Depeche Mode, play their The Cure, Lisa Lisa and Cook Jam, Run DMC, they all played there. Oh my God, you're talking about some of the godfathers of hip hop and, yep. and, and and the mama of freestyle music, folks. Right. right and look right, at Madonna. Right. Oh, so that's her. And those are the three first, dancers first, sitting down, right? First public first fear performance, performance in the world of this song. Is this video? Whoa, if this was it right here. Yeah. Wow. And you were there for that, my brother. Well, oh, the, the one I saw was I was on the roof, but this was on their stage. Okay, this is on the stage. Oh, uh, ha. And of course, no, of course, it's Madonna is going to be some dudes, you know, having to be her dancer. She ain't want no chicks around her. Huh? She, she, uh, whoa, she was, look at her. Though. Right. Um, she was I don't know. Oh, she's so young. My God. Madonna, I would love to interview you talk about all this greatness. I mean, look at them shorts. But I mean, homie shorts are the worst, though. The, the third <laughs> one to her left. Oh, my God. I would never wear. I mean, why is he so mismatched? Everybody else seems to be matching. I don't know, man. I guess that was part of the charm. <laughs> oh, my God. This is horrible. <laughs> all right. Uh, listen, guys. Uh, for now, I would never recommend wearing a blazer with shorts. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying, yo. I'm just saying. <laughs> so I gotta ask, since you were part of this whole thing, I mean, what what, what was one of the coolest uh, fashion statements you may have ever seen? You know what, man? I I am an utter, complete, freaking no clue. I'm, <laughs> I'm colorblind, man. I mean, don't ask me what. Oh, are. So yeah, so I don't know um, what was happening in terms of groundbreaking oh, fashion, but I, I just know that the, what I saw was there's something very cool going on here. And, and what attracted me was more the auditory stuff, the music. And uh, But seriously, uh, Betsy Johnson was uh, a designer at the time. She was big time uh, wow. hanging out in the dance interior. Let me get my broom, bro, because geez, all these names you drop, and I yep. got to start sweeping, son, just to keep my yeah. room neat. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. drop, dropping and plopping, kid. Wepa, this is what you got to do, though, because this is why, you know, I needed to talk to you, because you are a, a, a person that just does not stop. You know, you have a goal, you do it. Where does that come from, bro? I mean, where did you dig in, as just as an entrepreneur, where do you really dig in to uh, not, not to keep going forward and not stay, you know, stale? Here's something that I do. When somebody says, no, this will never work to me, my first thought is, oh, yeah. yeah. That's my, that's what's going through my head. And here's, here's something about when, when you have to present something to a gatekeeper, either they know more than you or you know more than them. There is no in between. Those, there's no in between. <laughs> so if they say no and they know more than you, they'll hopefully explain why your idea needs work. But if you know more than them and they say no, that means that they, they're either lazy so, or, or stupid. Or, so or stupid. when they say no, flat out without explanation, should I be one of those and be like, elaborate? Yeah. Can you please tell me why this doesn't seem to have the ability uh, to work? So put push them a little bit more. Like, yeah, hey, absolutely. Look, if, look, if you're going on him a or date, her. if you're going on a date, right? And it's somebody you you you. you I haven't gone on a date in over twenty five years. Okay, twenty six years ago. Twenty six <laughs> years ago, if you were wanted to go and, and and dance with a girl or something, and say, hey, you want to dance? And they say no. You probably would say, well, "Why not?" And they hopefully would have a reason, like I can't dance, or I'm deaf, or no. uh, I, I saw your moves, and eh, I don't know something. But you, I'm like, baby, I got the dope moves. Don't you want to dance with Mega Baby? Look, look, look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, some, some, you'd want a reason. Same thing when you are presenting an idea to a potential taker. You want if you're going, if they're going to slam the door, challenge them. Why? And sometimes they'll come up with a reason that's, holy shit, I never thought of that. Uh, yeah, I've got to keep that in mind the next time I make a pitch. Or, all right, this person doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. Well, just pick wait. the brain. Pick yeah, the brain. Right. Yo. And if okay. they come if up with something. you get a note, beat the brain. And if they say, yeah, just be, be thankful. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because if they come up with a good reason, you incorporate that the next time around. But if they come yeah. up with a stupid reason, then you think, okay, I, I shouldn't have been wasting like my you're time. you're ignorant, bro. You're an yeah. ignorant, right. you're an ignorant brother. 
Right. I, I cannot be a solution for you because you don't want the solution. You're too happy with Yo, the way things you are. You need going. to be as DJ the solution because you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna solve the problem that dance clubs are missing because you're bringing but, back OG fun yeah music. I well, mean I, I, and, I, and, and music that didn't insult other you know you know uh, you know ladies or insult right. men. Yep. It was just music about either love or fun. Period. Well, here's what's what's fascinating. You think that the most of the listeners, because there's like ten thousand people every week who who check this out, you think most of them would be some old people thinking, "Oh, when I was young, this is where I went." But no, it's young people yeah. who have never heard this before. And but you know what? They've heard the songs that I play sampled in yes. their favorite. Pop hit hits. pop or, or pop hit exactly, and all of a yep. sudden, like, oh, wait a minute, why are they using that beat? No, exactly, baby. no, it, baby. Why did that hip hop song use this beat? Right. Not that you know why, why that beat is using this. Yep. Get it, yep. get it right, folks. They get hear the it order. sampled in, in Jay Z, <laughs> they hear it sampled in Drake, in Lizzo. They hear these songs in I the mean, music that they like. Ray, if you got to give it to Jay Z, he's one of the first hip hop artists ever. To yep. be allowed to sample a Michael Jackson song, and, and Mike was like, yeah. "I'm never gonna allow this to happen," but yet he allowed it to happen. Yeah, well, <laughs> well he did it right. He he did it tastefully and he did it respectfully. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, and then sometimes uh, when I'm playing some stuff, in because I'm chatting live when I'm doing it, I hear th I see things like, "I wish I could go to a club like this. I wish I could hear this diversity of sounds." That are not. Uh, when are you performing at a club then? When are we going to do this yeah, shit live, man. kiddo? This is what we, we need to see. We need to see DJ Rafe Gomez bringing it back old school, baby, live at, at, at the closest NYC club or Jersey club. Let's get it done, New or York. Or come down to Florida, son. Or come down to Florida. Yeah, uh, these motherfuckers will love you because okay. there's a lot of youth here that loves everything. And, yeah. and you, it, it's true what you're saying because look at, for example, what Stranger Things, a new TV show has boom, done for boom, old music. Boom, boom, Because stuff that you and I grew up with or take for granted, you play it for a 15-year-old or a 20-year-old, they go, what the hell is this? Look, Metallica today was like, oh, my God, they played fucking Master of Puppets. Yep. We, we realized it like kind of immediately, and that shit is number one on motherfucking iTunes yep. today. Yeah, so that... That discovery, that ability later. to thrill people with something that they don't know, that's what I do every week. And the young listeners hear it and they go, I got to own this. I thank you for keeping it alive, Rafe. Just thank you. Because this thank is you, good music. Yeah, this is great. You. This is the shit that makes you want to move. Yep. Ain't no mumble rap. You know what I mean? And there's some EDM that you just can't dance to. Yep. But when you listen to what Rafe is doing, you're but going he, to be vibing. Your butt cheeks will be going like this on the chair, and you don't know, even know why. You're like, hey. And then, then you're going to get up and like almost start doing salsa and shit. You know? and, and like we were talking before, the only time I talk is at the beginning and at the end. You I hear say this? nothing in between. It's, you not hear like, this? it's not like, hey, you're checking out this cool. No, 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 no. I, <laughs> I want to blow you away with the way I mix them together. With the Do you way hear I this? I co them. Oh my God. I want you to hear the way I take the beats combine them so they breathe one track into another by keys the yeah. corresponding keys. listen so it's musical to the artistry yeah and by the way I, that the style that i'm using of djing is the style of the 80s back then i'm taking oh, the same shit. the yes. same dj approach that they do because i'm not doing it now where it's quick cuts and la, 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 la. i'm I, doing the same you, approach as the 80s when you do the approach you say the same approach are you still even fucking with vinyl or, or are you taking that same approach with digi same approach with digi Ah, so, Same approach so. of of finding the 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 in, the the entry points and the exit points and having them go like this. Oh, a marriage. So, so <laughs> no, it is. It is a marriage. It's just one thing and where you don't even wait. Wait, this is a new song. Did he and just then, blend. Yes, right. <laughs> perfect. Everything I go for the perfect, perfect blend. Thank it's you. Not, yeah. It's a lost art form, my brother. It's, well, it's a lost different. art form. That, and that's another thing. When the young young kids hear it, they go. This is not something I'm used to. This experience. This is a different way of doing it. Welcome to our world, baby. <laughs> yeah, but but you know, but sonically, our ears are attuned to this. If it, it works with us, yes. It, it, and anybody who also, if you're a musician, if I'm finding a song that is happens to be in the key of B, I'll find the next song in the key of B, and it's almost like the musicians are playing with each other because it's sonically 
perfect and agrees with each other. As it should. Yep. As it goddamn should, because thank you for bringing back that artistry, that skill level. That's what's important, especially with nowadays, again, because kids keep finding things yep. now. Yep. Yeah, right? they're discovering things that we took for granted because we lived through them. Well, you know what's dope, though? At least I could say I never took none of this shit for granted. I was a fan, hardcore, That's from true. day one on yep. everything. That was yep. my shit. It's just, that was just who I was. It's like, it, okay. it touches your identity. Yeah, yeah. It is it's so much a part of me, music, especially New York music. Because, folks, I don't yep. think many people understand when you say that, what that means. New York music, that shit is... Not just a listening experience, it is a fucking living culture. Yep, and all of these things, all of these genres intersected at this one club. Wow, bro. I can't believe uh, I'm almost jealous that I didn't get the opportunity. I will I, I was okay. Just, you know, you're invited every Thursday night, Al. Oh yeah, you're, you're gonna you're gonna make me you're gonna make me take it back. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to call my father. Hey dad, can I wear those bell bottoms? Because I need to get <laughs> into the fucking rhythm and to the mood right now. That's it. Put yeah. your headphones on, pour something nice, and you will be taken somewhere. I promise you. And you will and, like where I take you. And folks, I want you to see how much love Rafe is getting. So you check out this website right here, right? Especially you folks, if you're, yeah, if you're at like a TV show or, or a radio station, you need this shit in your life. Check it out. He's been on flaunt in you know, EDM.com. Yeah. The record. I mean, Associated yeah, yeah. Press, the Aquarian. I'm like, look at you, spoil, spoiled NYC. <laughs> People Where, around are the you world spoiled, are discovering are you this. New Yorkers like this now? Yeah, uh, the New Yorkers, but they, they hear it and they dig it and it takes them back. And if they're young, they, they go, wow. This this scene, I, I wish I was alive. If they were in between, like this. me, because I didn't get to go to that base, because you know, in '86, shit, I was what 11. <laughs> <laughs> you would really be sneaking in. Oh yeah, why? Well, I, I I thought I would be uh, getting in with, with how my mother used to dress me. <laughs> well, <laughs> I tell you what, I will make it possible for you to take your DeLorean and go to yeah. a time, bro, time travel back. And you will, Rafe, you will be able to be there. Stop fucking with me. There's somebody selling one out here. You got to get and, it. Yeah, and I, I'm like, wow. But, you know, we just moved and all to where we are. Like, shit. I, I showed this to my wife, and she goes, don't even think about it. <laughs> okay. Okay. If that, if that was a new addition to the white hair. See, I think it came up in here, in this in middle area. <laughs> I was like, damn it. <laughs> you, know, you know what, man? I, I would not want to own one. I'd love to just have it for the weekend. I just no, I want to just have it to have it. I wouldn't even drive this motherfucker. Yeah, you know what I mean. Not that they are drivable, most of them. <laughs> See, but, I think um, the thing with a DeLorean, I think it was stainless steel body. So mm -hmm. even if you scratch it, you could just get some Brillo and buff it right out. I love that. Oh my god! Hey, Brillo for uh, kids for you guys that don't wash dishes. Right. Yeah, this is what you used to use to clean your grill or or, or like uh, the the copper or oh, not the copper. What was it called? The the heavy ass. Uh, Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You got to excuse me, folks. I've had a long day. And or, I'm or, or the, like... it, it cleans the grease and dried mofongo that's on your bowls. Yeah, but well, I mean, you, but you're bringing mofongo. We don't, we don't need it. We do not need to clean the mofongo of music you're creating <laughs> because you, the, the, these blends, bro. Because again, there's very few DJs that I know of that actually are all about the blends and respect the artistry yeah. that it is to be a DJ. Because for me, being a DJ is an art form. You can't just go on there, buy yourself a digital fucking mixer, and be like, oh, look at me, I'm a DJ. No. It is art. Yeah. Like, like Rafe, you were talking, those blends. Honestly, did you go to your DJ school, or is this something you just... Nothing. By, by ear, and you bought your ear. new marks or your Gemini stuff back in the day, and that's... What was your first mixer, bro? And, and, and turntables. Yeah, it was new mark. New mark, yeah. He goes new I, mark. I sell, I sell, <laughs> I remember. I sell Find the time, baby. Yep. And I, I'm driven melodically, because I want to find the right keys, but I'm also dr driven rhythmically. I'm trying to find the parts where the drums of one track... We'll talk to another track. Like if I hear one track going, -ba 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 -ba, and then the other track will go boom, and I just combine them at that point. Ah. So you're you're just uh, you're bouncing, but you don't have to stop your bounce because it's right on time. So we gotta ask here, you know, before the show ends, what's the 
ultimate goal. Let's begin to manifest. Yeah. What do you want with that Soteria Rewind? Let's, let's speak it onto the world so we can make it happen. Okay, baby. let me let me just head back. <laughs> and come at you. All right. Uh, I'm doing a bunch of things. I'd love to get this onto radio stations around the world. Because the fact that it was this New York experience of downtown New York, it's a place where people globally can enjoy this experience. I'd like to get it onto a on-demand content streaming service, whether Oof. it's the Sirius would be great, uh, Apple Music, Tidal, Spotify, so that people could access these mixes anytime. Ty, you know what? Not for nothing, but Jay-Z, you need this man in your life, yep. especially as, as a New Yorker. You know what I mean? You know, you, you got you to gotta incorporate the, the, the tri-state area. He's Jay Z right parlay avec le bro. <laughs> Make, it <laughs> Make it happen, web out, baby. Because, because again, let's manifest. This is, listen, we speak it, and, and and this hallucination that is called life, we could now begin to manipulate it with our manifestation, which is magic words. Exactly. And, and let's make it happen. Let's make the algorithm change. Yeah, because I am a solution for Jay Z. Hey, you hear this? this? Is a solution. It can bring in new audience. It can bring in increased listening. It can bring in media attention. So and that's what it is. Again, this is why I brought up the fucking Stranger Things example. Because look how that one little that's the show best example is best bringing example. back old school. Music. We've had two old ass eighty songs already be fucking number one because yeah. of this one TV show. And I got to give props to the music director or the supervisor of that show, they found the right songs that were not played to death and were slept on, and it just integrated with the story of, of what was happening in the narrative, yes. and it just was... That's what it, does it see how important music plays into every part of our narrative of life, whether it's through entertainment, everyday living, or even tuning in to, to a podcast. You saw, I played you a little bit of uh, uh, what Rafe has going on on when Thursdays at what time? Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Thursdays, Eva. 8 p.m. EST to 10 p.m. On twitch.tv, folks. Dance to your rewind is right, right there, y'all. It's right there, and it's free. That's the best thing. It's oh free. Oh, my God. Look at that. You don't even got it. Listen, you know what? Look, this is the first time I could pull out my wallet and not have to open it. I don't want you to have a good time. Out. I want you to put it on the side. Yeah, I don't want you to touch that wallet. I just want you to touch it. Yeah, yeah. You know what? You could tell I'm 90. I still have a wallet. That's it. But if you want to chat with me, you got to register. That's it. Oh, you hear this? If you want some, if you want to pick race brain, register. So how yeah. does that work? So they register here and they're able to. No, 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 no. Yeah, they it, just it, go it, to Twitch, okay. register, sign so, up. So subscriber only listen. So if you subscribe to the channel, then you can view. So you, you, better, you better subscribe. Me. Then you can chat with me. But if you don't want to subscribe and you just want to say, I don't want to chat with this guy. Who the hell is this guy? You can still listen nah. for free. Nah, man. We need to chat with not just Rafe, but the community that Rafe has built behind yeah. this music. Yeah. Because that's the important part of these chats. For me, I have such a blast on these chats, my brother, because it's just people from my era, or yep. our era, rather, that are just loving and digging this. And, and when they bring up certain topics, it's like, oh, my God, I have forgotten <laughs> about this. Yep. So you just thank you for doing that, for allowing us great hair folks. Well, hey, I want to get the gray hair and the non dyed the black hair. Black hair and the non dyed. Yeah, bring it's, it up. And even dyed hair is okay. Let's get yeah, it done. That's true. They want to use some of that that, that stuff. L'Oreal. That's cool. <laughs> Just for Listen, men. I'm going to say it right here L'Oreal, you're going to be in big trouble. Because my daughter has a fucking like, a rash on her forehead after using your oh, product. Oh, shit. So get ready. Get ready. Because if that shit don't cure in the next day, it's going to come knocking with an attorney. The I mega family is going to be talking. <laughs> be a mega lawsuit. I, and I'm saying it right here because it's like, yo, um, what's up? Anyway. <laughs> but well, what's important is, the most important part of here is this. I need you guys to show the love. I want you to check out everything that Rafe has done at danceinteriorrewind.contently.com. Check out all the places that have spread the love, yes. if you will, it, of this amazing it's, platform. Yep. It's... it's uh. It's a trip that you will absolutely... And, and, and let me ask you, Bo. You have all these amazing platforms that are showing the love uh, to the Rewind. How did this even happen, kid? Are they just finding you like, oh, shit, this guy is just too fire? They're finding me. And also, 
Yours truly in the place to be has got a day job. And the day job is generating media content for clients around the world. So oh. I, took, I took my skills and applied it to me. It's like I said, okay, how, yes. how can, what would I do if I were advising me? And that's what I did. As you said, use your own knowledge for yourself at times as well. So uh, if you're for hire, you know, can we reach you anywhere specifically? You're like, yo, I, I, I need Rafe Gomez to help me. Uh, on LinkedIn. You'll find me on LinkedIn. So go to LinkedIn, look up Rafe Gomez and the rap. And ping, ping the brother on LinkedIn. Ping, he will, ping. He will reply. There he you will go. Abide. This is so dope, bro. Rafe, man. Uh, you know, flowers time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Thank you for entertaining us. Thank you for being bold enough to share in your skill and your talent. Thank you for sharing your stories, your energy, your passion with us. It's very important. So people like you are what's needed in the world. Thank well, you for, I, for allowing me that, that, that opportunity to pick your brain. Here you, I mean, folks, we were even in, in the green room. We were talking about freestyle music. Like, he don't know. I, yeah, yeah. Listen. TKA, Lou, Susie, Cover Girls, fucking Coro, George Lamont, legends. I mean, homie, and, yo, I wait, before we go, we got to talk about Pablo Toto. Fly Teta. I tell people about this song, like, what are you talking about? The youngins. So, yeah, man. Talk a little bit about what, what you were telling me. Yeah. When it came I, down to I, Fly Teta. Yes, please. A uh, guy for, named Jose Chinga. I saw this <laughs> dude in a club. And he was uh, just rapping with this fake Cuban accent about everything he was going on around him. And uh, he started talking about Tetas and how much he loved them. <laughs> and I didn't know what the hell he was talking about because what's this guy talking? Why is he even what is What's he bringing this up for? <laughs> and I, I just said, you know what, man? You got to get on a mic. You got to get in the studio and you got to make a record. And then. I love it. I love that. That is so amazing. You see how acclimated Rafe is into the music scene. Keep doing what you do, bro. Thank you. I'm and a Al, fan for life. Th thank you for giving me this opportunity to chat with you. The passion and the, the knowledge that you have about your hobby and comics is admirable. You're giving people an opportunity to share their passion. And uh, I would love to just stay in touch because you, you're you bringing good to the world. Oh, don't you worry. I think I need a DJ when we do the Crusader Con. Maybe we could do a Desiteria special for comic Oh! Cool. Uh, that's things to think about. So we're going to do it for charity when we do the con. So, hey, there we go. Uh, so, we, yo, bro, what? I had a DJ two years ago on one. A shout out to my boy. And um, I think you could be the next one that could do a nice little mix for us. Hit. Down to one. FL and get on the deck. FL, let's get a done. Yo, yo, yep. Rafe, you've been awesome. So again, folks, please tune in every Thursday, 8 p.m. E S T, S -T. on twitch.tv. Check out Dance Syria T E R I A Rewind. Yep. Right. So Dance Syria Rewind is the whole word. Trust me, you guys are gonna be jamming out. Smoking, drinking, whatever you do, your vices are gonna be yep. on the effing high because you're gonna be like, holy damn. And if you don't do that, even that's even better. Please don't get into bad vices. <laughs> hey you're man, gonna be, you're gonna be sitting back drinking your cup of water or tea or coffee and be like, damn, this is great. You want to eat some Skittles, you want to have some edibles, whatever it is. He says Just, Skittles. Yeah. yeah, Skittles do not taste the same way from when they first came out. I oh, will that? say that. What's what's the, when what's the change? What has gone downhill? So, the sugar change is something because it ain't as sweet and it ain't as tasty. I'll tell oh, you that man. much. All right. Well, okay. Forget. The, how about Starburst? Starburst has kind of remained the same. Okay. I'll, I'll give them that. They've kept the original recipe. Unlike Coke, you know, we can't get high drinking soda no more. All right. So if you want to eat Starburst or Sour Patch Kids or edibles, whatever it is, do it with that. <laughs> That's yes, because you're gonna love it. But you know what? I would prefer you use '80s uh, candy like lemon heads and Boston. Oh Lincoln. yes. <laughs> and uh, what's a uh, uh, what's the stuff that Mikey ate and he died? The uh, pop rocks. Oh, pop rocks! Hell yeah, bro! And please drink the soda as you watch. Trust me, you yeah. will not die. Blow your mind. <laughs> blow your brain. It may blow up your stomach for a minute, but it won't blow. <laughs> yeah. Blow your intestines out. Whatever. Well, one more time. One more time, because I got to keep showing it. Show the love. 
twitch.tv dance to Syria rewind and please check out the website dance to Syria rewind dot contently dot com and read right? the book life and death on the new york dance floor it was amazing yeah you and gotta I check really... out that book i'm gonna buy it bro yeah oh you're oh, i'm buying I just, it i just i promise you when you read about the fun house and jelly bean and the lists of songs that were big at the time you're gonna be you're gonna have to put it down and just so what's gonna happen here is i'm gonna get the book Read that, and then I'm gonna be Rafe. Um, can we do a special about the book? <laughs> I'll get the. I'll let the dude know. He'll be happy to talk to you. Oh, yeah, if you know him. Let's go. Yeah. All, all three oh, of us talking about the greatness. Let's yep. get it done. I'm gonna no, do it be, for real. Tim get Morris. that email be going because okay. we will do this. We okay, will do this. We need to chat, and I want yeah. you back on because I love the energy. I love what you're doing. And again, you threw me back, and I mean <laughs> way back. Thank you for that. Because you again, it, those man. were good times. Thank you. So again, folks, you see what's going on here. All right. <clears throat> you know what to do when it comes to comic crusaders, me gente. Check out comic crusaders.com, undercovercapes.com. Everything's there. You know, like, subscribe, comment, show the love. All right. And, and buy a that? shirt, buy some of this dude's merch. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, look at look at what a sexy cap. Shirt. Look at what a sexy cap. I mean, yours won't say Al Mega like mine, but hey. No, no, I'm oh, totally you can customize it. I'm gonna get one of them shits and I'm gonna wear that. Around. Thank you, thank you. And with that, folks, as we end the show, have a happy day. Hasta la próxima. Thank you for listening to the Comic Crusaders podcast. If you like the content, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, please visit ComicCrusaders.com and our extended podcast family over at UndercoverCapes.com. And also, make sure to download the Comic Crusaders app on the Google Play Store today.